Good morning and welcome to you on this Wednesday the 9th of September 2020. Lovely that you have been able to join us today for morning prayer. Today we've been asked to remember Charles Lauder who is a priest um, and just to let you know a little bit about him. So Charles Lauder was born in 1820 and came under the influence of the Oxford movement during his studies at Exeter College in the early 1840s. After ordination, he became increasingly drawn to retractarian and ritualistic expression of the faith, especially after his move to London in 1851. Despite the fierce opposition such ca Catholic spirituality faced within the church, as a curate in Pimlico and Stepney, and then as the first vicar of St Peter's London Docks, Lauder came to epitomise the 19th century Anglo-Catholic slum priest. Dedicated to the poor and destitute, he was tireless in his parish work. His health gave way and he died at the age of 60 on this day in 1880. So that's Charles Lauder, who um, we've been asked to remember today. So as we come together for morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is all your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings that you should seek them out? You have made them little lower than angels, and crown them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. Our Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night is past, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Our appointed psalm today is Psalm 119, verses 153 to the end. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord. O consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. According to your promise, give me life. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your compassion, O Lord. Give me life according to your judgments. Many there are that persecute and oppress me, yet do I not swear from your testimonies. It grieves me when I see the treacherous, for they do not keep your word. Consider, O Lord, how I love your commandments. Give me life according to your loving kindness. The sum of your word is truth, and all your righteous judgments endure for evermore. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. I am as glad of your word as one who finds great spoils. As for lies, I hate and abhor them, but your law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise you because of your righteous judgments. Great peace have they who love your law. Nothing shall make them stumble. 
Lord, I have looked for your salvation, and I have filled your commandments. My soul has kept your testimonies, and greatly have I loved them. I have kept your commandments and testimonies, for all my ways are before you. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. My lips shall pour forth your praise when you have taught me your statutes. My tongue shall sing of your word, for all your commandments are righteous. Let your hand reach out to help me, for I have chosen your commandments. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord, for your law is my delight. Let my soul live and it shall praise you, and let your judgments be my help. For I have gone astray like a sheep that is lost. O seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord. God of mercy, swift to help us, as our lips pour forth your praise, fill our hearts with the peace you give to those who wait for your salvation. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And today uh, we continue with our readings from 2 Samuel. Yesterday we missed out as we read for the Blessed Virgin Mary. So we're picking up the story again. 2 Samuel 19 verses 8 to 23. All the troops came before the king. Meanwhile, all the Israelites had fled to their homes. All the people were disputing throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king delivered us from the hand of our enemies and saved us from the hand of the Philistines. And now he has fled out of the land because of Absalom. But Absalom, whom we anointed over us, is dead in battle. Now, therefore, why do you say nothing about bringing the king back? King David sent his message to the priests Zadok and Abithar, saying to the elders of Judah, Why should you be the last to bring the king back to his house? The talk of all Israel has come to the king. You are my kin. You are my bone and my flesh. Why then should you be the last to bring back the king? And say to Amsa, Are you not my bone and my flesh? So may God do to me and more, if you are not the commander of my army from now on, in place of Joab. I must have swayed the hearts of all the people of Judah as one, and they sent word to the king, Return, both you and all your servants. So the king came back to the Jordan. And Judah came to Gilgal to meet the king and bring him over the Jordan. Shemal, son of Gera the Benjamite, from Bahurim, hurried to come down with the people of Judah to meet King David. With him were a thousand people from Benjamin. And Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul, with his fifteen sons and his twenty servants, rushed down to the Jordan ahead of the king. While the crossing was taking place, to bring over the king's household and to do his pleasure. Shimei, son of Gerar, fell down before the king as he was about to cross the Jordan and said to the king, May my lord not hold me guilty or remember how your servant did wrong on the day my lord the king left Jerusalem. May the king not bear it in mind, for your servant knows that I have sinned. Therefore, see, I have come this day, the first of all the house of Joseph, to come down to meet my lord the king. Ashbai, son of Zerak, answered, Shall not Shemai be put to death for this, because he cursed the Lord's anointed? But David said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zacharach, though you should today become an adversary to me? Shall anyone be put to death in Israel this day? For do I not know that I am this day king over Israel? The king said to Shimei, You shall not die. And the king gave him his oath. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now for our canticle. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. 
Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me fruitless, but it will accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the task I give it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Our second reading this morning is taken from Acts and it's chapter 11 and it's verses 19 to the end. Now, those who were scattered because of the persecution that took place over Stephen travelled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus and Antioch and they spoke the word to no one except Jews. But among them were some men of Cyprus and Cyrene who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenites also, proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number became believers and turned to the Lord. News of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion for he was a good man. Full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for an entire year they associated with the church and taught a great many people, and it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. At that time, prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agapus, stood up and predicted by the Spirit that there would be a severe famine over all the world. And this took place during the reign of Claudius. The disciples determined that according to their ability, each would send relief to the believers living in Judah. This they did, sending it to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. And now for our Benedictus. You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. Let us pray. Now I'm using prayers this morning from Common Worship. And it's a short litany. Heavenly Father, at this time, help and comfort the lonely, the bereaved, and the oppressed. No, Lord, we name them on our heart, those known to us who are bereaved today, those who've lost loved ones over these recent months, for those who are lonely and anxious, particularly at this time of uncertainty and increase in infections. We lift them to you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, keep in safety those who travel and all who are in danger. Heavenly Father, we lift all those who have to travel to their place of work. For our students, pupils attending school, those who are at this time travelling to universities and colleges, perhaps for the first time. For those who are coming from overseas for their university or college placements. We lift all of them to you, O Lord. For those who have to travel on our buses and trains, we lift them to you. O oh Lord, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, heal the sick in body and mind. So we lift to you, O oh Lord, those who are struggling in body, mind or spirit. Those who may be on our prayer lists, those that are on our hearts. In a moment of quiet, we name them and lift them to you, O oh Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift to you, O Lord, our church, Justin, our Archbishop, Rose, our Bishop, Joe, our Archdeacon, Mark, our Area Dean, and for all those, lay and ordained, who minister in so many different ways across our benefits, across our deanery here in Canterbury and across our diocese and nation. For those who work with the marginalised, for those who work for charities, and we hold before you today charities that are pertinent to so many people here in Canterbury, catching lives, and porch light. For Canterbury Food Bank, connecting Canterbury. And we name on our heart, O oh Lord, those who use those services. We pray particularly for our homeless community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for wisdom for all in authority, for our government in their decision making and policy making, for all the hard diff and difficult decisions that they have to make. We pray, O oh Lord, that your word will be heard there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And at this time, we continue to pray for all our key workers. For those who are continuing to work so hard in our hospitals, our schools, and to ensure that our food chain to 
to our hospital to our supermarkets. We live them to you, and particularly at this time of harvest. We live them to you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray at this time for all those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, remaining ever mindful of those couples who perhaps were wanting to get married at this time and having to postpone their weddings or having them under very difficult and different circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for all those who've died before us, for those whose anniversaries fall at this time, for those who are preparing for funerals, and for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Heavenly Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And our collect for today. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ reconciling the world to yourself, help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you through him who is lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and all those that you love and pray for, for this day and always. Amen. Just have a moment. Just, you can vaguely hear some doves, I think it is, or pigeons. As ever, it's lovely that you've been able to join us. Um, and thank you as ever for your comments. It's good to know that you are sharing morning prayer with me. Um, please do join us for night prayer tonight at six o'clock. Otherwise, we um, will meet tomorrow at nine o'clock for morning prayer and again night prayer at six tomorrow. Whatever you do today, just keep connected, keep safe and keep praying. God bless and have a really good day. Bye.